Hello, it's a beautiful day outside and a perfect day to go work on your car. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to reverse engineer a vehicle CAN bus or as I say in a cool terms, to hack your car. Um, all you require is some basic CAN knowledge, information about controller area network which is the protocol used by uh, the car companies uh, to, to code their ECU uh, and you need a paper, a pencil and lots of patience. I will walk you through uh, reverse engineering some of the basic signals like what happens when you press a brake, what happens when you press uh, the accelerator pedal, now how would you go ahead and uh, decode where the fuel value lies uh, so that when you start driving the car you know what your MVG is. Uh, all these things are, are very simple and with some basic uh, automotive experience uh, you would be able to hack into any car that you want. This is how a particular CAN message is structured. All the ECUs communicate through this particular ID for this particular CAN message. Then the message has a set length. Uh, the message can be 8 bytes long, it could be 6 bytes long, 7 bytes long. It really depends on the auto manufacturer. Then the third part is the direction, which means whether the message is being transmitted by a particular ECU or it's being received by a particular ECU then how often it is received, that's the periodicity. And then every message has a certain set of signals. Each signal then, uh, as we saw earlier, has a start bit uh, that tells where the signal starts and has a length that tells how long the signal is defined. It also has a sign, meaning if the, the signal can take only positive values or negative values uh, or it can take decimal values or only integers, etc. And then there is something called a scale and offset, which means um, how would you convert this raw signal that the ECU transmits uh, to some physical readable English value. All right, this is what I call as a CAN message grid. This grid has eight rows. Each row repre represents one byte. So there are eight bytes. And each cell represents one bit. So there are 64 bits. That's how a typical CAN message is structured. Now, every manufacturer has a certain way of representing each signal in their CAN message. For example, let's take one signal called brake. So this brake signal is usually a Boolean signal, so, which means that the brake is pressed or not pressed. So it can take a value of 1 if the brake is pressed and take value of 0 if the brake is not pressed. Now let's assume that this brake is represented at this position. How would you quantify this position? This position is bit number 33 and the length of this bit or the signal is 1. So we say that the start bit of brake signal is 33 and the length is 1. Now second signal, uh, let's take back this pedal position goes from say 0% when you're not pressing the accelerator pedal to 100% when you're fully throttling. Now let's say this pedal is represented by this row. So the length is 8 bits long or byte long and it starts at bit number 48. A typical auto OEM would define uh, accelerator pedal position in this CAN message with a start bit of 48 and a length of it. This is it. Now let's go in a vehicle and see how actual uh, OEM bus looks like. 